that's good. I haven't found my first plant. <laughs> wow. That's different. I really like that. Peshads or Pachads or Pacha! <laughs> yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> All right. It's Thursday and it's time uh, for uh, beautiful bourbon. Uh, yeah. So quick story to get started. I, you know, I do this because I like telling stories. I'm a storyteller. Um, and when I was taking the photo of Old Elk, um, I was over there, I was, I was back behind the house in the woods. And uh, <laughs> as I got back to the tree where I wanted to shoot that photo, um, I saw a buck and a doe jump out. The doe is just a normal size, you know, maybe smallish kind of deer. But the buck, the buck has been living back there for, I don't know, five, six years. And I've watched it go from a teeny tiny little basket rack to what it is now. It's a monster. This thing, huge. So the tines are up like this, right? Well, if you have one that goes down, it's called a drop tine. And he's got a drop tine that's got to be 18 inches long or maybe even two feet long. The thing was huge. And I didn't get time to take a picture of it. I was kind of dumbfounded and aghast. I had no idea that it was even there and just boom, there they are. So I enjoyed it and, and took my photo and that was that. So anyway, kind of a, kind of a cool situation uh, when I took that photo. All right, so last Saturday, OHLQ, uh, for those of you watching from places other than Ohio, that is uh, our liquor control board, for lack of a better way to describe it. And they put on Single Barrel Saturday. Uh, there was all sorts of different barrels out there. I've got the right up here. Um, I, you know, I had pledged to never stand in line again for a booze. And I got there and the store that I went to was so small that they had no choice but to let people in one at a time. So I ended up standing in line. And I didn't, I got, I got what I wanted. And we'll get into that here in a minute too. Um, some of what was released last weekend were Penelope Burden. Uh, bourbon. Now these are all single barrel. Not all of them are barrel proof, but they're all single barrel except for one. Uh, Penelope. It sounds like he's ready for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I'll invite him over. He can sit next to the mashed potatoes. Uh, Penelope, Elijah Craig, uh, Whistle Pig, Smooth Ambler, Old Elk, Cask Finish Series. There were a bunch of these. Different ones. Jefferson's Reserve, George Dickel, uh, High West, Buzzard's Roost, New Lou, Traverse City Whiskey Company, uh, Kentucky Peerless uh, Distilling Company, and as an added bonus, they did uh, Weller Full Proof as well. And I did all right. I was, I was happy. I, I picked up a couple extras. I got another Rittenhouse, um, but I got the Traverse City, and it says uh, single barrel, 16-1795, and this bad boy is uh, 108 proof. 108.2 proof. It's a six-year-old, and I like this stuff. Um, and then I picked the one I really wanted was this one, the New Lou. Um, I've gotten their straight uh, single barrel before. Uh, it was a it was a store pick, and oh my lord, was it good! Um, and my thoughts at the time, and I still remember uh, because you know you got those pours that just stick with you, right? And this is one of those. And I thought that if this were aged longer, it could easily rival George T. Stag. It's that good to me. Uh, other people are going to go, you crazy! No, no, that's, that's what I think. That's what I think about it. And uh, then I picked up this one. I, I, I never talk about this one. I picked this one out of 10. In fact, I... <laughs> I'm going to keep buying that until it's not available anymore. Okay. Uh, Old Elk had four offerings in the mix. It had an uh, Armandac cast finish. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but we're going to pretend. Uh, a tawny port cask, 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 cask finish. Uh, rye finished in Barbados rum casks. And this one finished in Oloroso sherry casks. There we go. Uh, there were four different barrels of each of those with slightly different notes attached to each. By the way, uh, before I forget, 
last week we did barrel seagrass. And I told you I was going to leave the cork off for the night and put it back on the next day. I left that cork out until yesterday. I haven't tried it again. I will try it again. Okay. Um, this is barrel number 70, which also happens to be the highest proof of the offerings for Old Elk that day. This is 110.6 proof cask strength, the product of a single finishing barrel. The six-year-old high malt bourbon. Uh, it's 51% corn, 34% uh, malted barley, and 15% rye. 34% malted barley. That's up there. Um... Mm -hmm. A single barrel uh, sourced from MGP, a uh, New York producer, and a Colorado producer, then finished in Oloroso Sherry casks for six months. Some of these available in the state say that they are available, um, or that they sit in the sherry cask for eight months. This one specifically is six months. Um, I do like sherry cask uh, finished, so I'm probably going to like this. Word is that Old Elk... Plans to eventually produce their own distillate. We hear that all the time, so we'll see. Um, but uh, Old Elk's master distiller worked at MGP in Indiana for like 40 years, so it's certainly possible that they'll do their own stuff. It's certainly possible that they won't. I'm getting just a little nose off of this. I've had Old Elk before. I had their weeder. Uh, we even uh, talked about it here on the, on the show, and I really liked it, so I'm thinking I'm going to like this one. Old Elk out of Fort Collins, Colorado. They have a name for themselves for their high mash bills, or their high percentage of malted barley in the mash bill. And I know you're thinking, what might I taste because of the barley? Well, that's a good question. The nose on this, I'm getting um, caramel. I am getting the sherry cask. I'm getting a really nice oak. Little cinnamon. The nose is not real strong for 110.6 proof. Uh, so, corn is going to give you some sweetness, right? But the flavor grains that go into bourbon are the rye, and the malted barley. And malted barley is going to give you, um, think scotch, really, because it's malted barley and single malt, right? So think scotch, think nutty, chocolatey, smoky type of flavors, sometimes uh, coffee, uh, caramel, raisins, that type of thing. Um, corn, you're going to get sweeter notes like brown butter, honey. Um, it, again, it doesn't give a lot of flavor. It's more about the sweetness and about being cheap and easy. Um, and then uh, wheat is the same thing. Wheat is going to give you a softer, uh, a softer feel, a better mouth feel. Corn is going to provide a better mouth feel, as, mouth feel as well. But wheat tends to not offer a lot of flavor to a bourbon either. Um, so if you have a wheated bourbon, it might have other things in it. If it's just a wheat bourbon, then it's going to be the flavors are going to come out of the barrel mainly. Uh, Old Elk is also known for taking weeks to proof their products down instead of days. Most products that have been proofed, they do it in, you know, most places 24 to 48 hours. This place takes a couple of weeks to proof it. They say that they do that because when you proof bourbon, the temperature goes up. And so they do it slowly to keep the temperature down, which in essence will keep some of the flavors evaporating. That's their story and they're sticking to it. <laughs> the um, cork, the topper, I read that these are made by Otterbox. The, the cell phone case company, the founder of Old Elk, was also the founder of Otterbox. And I understand these corks, or these toppers, are made at Otterbox. So, it ought to be able to withstand a beating. <laughs> All right. Let's give it a shot. Okay, um, 110 proof, and it knows it. The bloom was um, fierce and steady. Um, um, at, at first taste, and the first thing that hit me 
when I took a sip. Dirt. It, it, it has me almost speechless. Um, the proof, and I guess you could say the, um, Mm. Let's just let's just let's just spell it out. Okay. It dried out my mouth immediately. Uh and it tasted like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. That was the first thing. It's right out of the neck. <laughs> but that's what I got. All right. Okay. All right. Let's Let's be fair now to it, all right? Can I can I do that? Can I can I be fair? <laughs> okay, that was better. Yeah. <laughs> that first sip was not uh complimentary. First sip, dirt. Uh, hi, Austin. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, I'm. It's got a long finish. I'm having trouble picking things out. Uh, just to be completely 100% honest with you, it's probably because of what I ate for dinner. Uh, I did a boo-boo and had something kind of spicy for, di for dinner, and um, it's throwing my palate off. I can tell you that right now. Um, and I just ate like 15 minutes ago. I know, that's a great big derp dinner. I get it. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. The author of the Whiskey Bible uh, has a very bland diet. When he's doing his tastings and getting ready for the Whiskey Bible, very bland tastings. He He won't eat anything spicy. He won't drink anything that's, I think, carbonated or anything like that. Um, very bland because he wants to be able to have his palate. He, would, he doesn't even want to cook because just the smells in the house could set his, his palate off. And he prides himself on being able to, you know, accurately read every bourbon or rye or whatever it is he's drinking. Um, so I, I erred <laughs> by eating ribs uh, before this burb cast. They were delicious, by the way. <laughs> All right. Now let's see if I'm primed. I'm primed. Um... The proof is right about where it ought to be with this one. Um, the 110.6 is nice. It sits on your tongue for a little while. Um, it lets you know it's there. I do really like it. It's got a fantastic mouthfeel. Um, surprisingly, considering the high percentage of barley in this, I'm really getting some rye notes. Um, I am Maybe that's coming out of the, the sherry cask. I am getting some of the sherry, but it's very, really kind of sedate compared to, you know, if it was in that barrel for six months, you'd think that there'd be, you know, almost an Angel's Envy style uh, flavoring of it as far as, you know, the influence over the bourbon itself, but it's really not. Um, but I'm, I'm getting some of the, the rye spices, really, uh, those toasted cereal style notes. Um, they're mixed in. They're mixed into the to, to the blend of the of the whole flavor profile, um, but um, this is not giving me anything sweet. I thought the sherry cask would give me something sweet, and almost wineish, um, but it isn't. Um, this I, I would put this in the savory category of bourbons, not the sweet, not the floral. This is definitely savory to me. Somebody else may be getting different notes off of it, but this is what I'm getting off of it. Uh, poured myself just a little bit more now that I've got my my taster primed <laughs> let's see if I can't get anything more out of it uh, I'm gonna go over to Nulu is delicious yes it is 
You've been drinking already. No, not yet. Tom's talking. Yeah. All right. Uh, they don't. The stuff doesn't stay up on my phone. I have to actually read it on the computer now. They keep changing stuff on me. Let's see if I can just open this up a little bit. I didn't do that before. I had thought about using one of the bourbon trail glasses, but I'm glad I didn't because the nose on this is just not real strong for 106 proof, 110.6 proof. All right. I do get the sherry on the nose, but I'm not, it's not really presenting itself on the, on the, on the palate. Mm. I found it. This was, the, okay. This is odd that I had to do this, but there's, there is a technique that you can do when you're tasting bourbon, and I just did it, and I didn't really mean to do it, but I did it, and it worked. As you're tasting your bourbon, see if I can be descriptive. Lower the back of your tongue, and it will open up your sinus cavities more in the back of your schnoz, <laughs> in the back of your throat. When I did that, I got the, I got the sherry cask. Uh, definitely a winish type note, very kind of sweet up in the sinus cavity. I got it there. Up here on the palate where flavors actually belong, um, I am getting some cinnamon. I'm getting some um, uh, the, the caramel, uh, but really um, I'm getting those rye notes. Um, it's, it's not what I would consider a sweet pour. The sherry cask, I guess I thought it would be sweeter, more wine-like. I thought it would have, um, yeah, a little bit like the Angel's Envy and a little bit like, like some of the Cabernet casks that I've tried. I know we're talking wine and this is sherry, but sherry is wine, just on steroids. That's how I got peanuts. You know, you, you taste it and you taste it and you taste it and eventually you're gonna pull out different notes. And on that one, I got peanuts. Um, so again, it's taking me back to those rye spices. Um, it's kind of interesting, really. Um, I don't love it. I don't hate it. Uh, this is one that I can drink. Uh, it's probably one that I'm not gonna want to drink a lot of. The weeded one is delicious. I have trouble staying out of that weeded one. Um, this one, uh, I won't have trouble staying out of this one. Um, I was talking to somebody uh, online the other day and they told me that the uh, blah, 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 the Armagnac uh, cask finish is fantastic. It's delicious. So I'm gonna see if I can find that one. Um, let's uh, Let's open this up a little bit. Just a little. All right. Let's see what this does. That's not a big pour, so that water, I, I put an awful lot of water on that. So it's probably gonna kill the, the bloom. That probably sounds annoying on your end. <laughs> I'll not do that. <laughs> At least I'll try not to do that. All right. Ooh, the nose gave me butter. I like butter. <laughs> I like Christmas. <laughs> I like Santa. <laughs> Sorry. It, 
and it didn't really change much the flavor. Um, the the mouthfeel got a little more creamy uh, on water, but other than that, it really didn't do a whole lot. It did bring down the proof a lot, um, but not so much that I couldn't still enjoy it. Yeah, this is not going to go in my top fifteen. <laughs> but you know, I don't hate it. There are there are bourbons and ryes and things I've had recently that I like a lot less than this one. Um, that barrel seagrass, I like less than this one. Now the barrel seagrass. Let me let me jump back to that for just a second because I learned something. At least I think I learned something. I was talking to somebody online about the barrel seagrass and they seem to think that there are um, two like seasons of barrel seagrass. Either you're going to get one that's so hot that you can't enjoy it or you're going to get one that is full of flavor like most of the reviewers are talking about. Um, I obviously didn't get that one. I got the one that was <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's just the luck of the draw. I mean, they're they're all they're all well, yeah, they're all uh, I think barrel proof. I don't think they have a, a, a product that's not barrel proof. I don't know. I had to look it up, I guess. But I think all their stuff is barrel proof. So I guess it's just the luck of which one you get. Whether you get one that's too hot to handle. <laughs> Hey, Kevin, how are you? I'm glad you're here. Or if it's, uh, you know, full of flavor, which mine was not. But again, I left it open until yesterday. It's been open for almost a week. So actually, it was open for a week, seven days. So maybe I'll like it next time. I don't know. Well, we will come back to it. We will. I promise. All right. Just want to get this cooled down. Yeah, rye notes. I'm numb right here. <laughs> um, I'm getting rye notes. Uh, uh, I'm getting the toasted cereals, that that uh, that grassiness. A lot of the same thing I got last week with the barrel, to be quite honest with you. Um, Dan is watching. Hey, Dan. How are you, sir? Need to get with you one of these days, by the way, Dan. Now, don't get excited. <laughs> you get to supply the bourbon. <laughs> I've seen what you drink. You get the good stuff. I know. All right. I'm getting a little mint. Rye notes are just beating me over the head. This is not a rye. Quinn's watching. Hey, Quinn. Straight bourbon whiskey, finished in sherry barrels. It's amazing. It's got, I'll go over the mash bill one more time, 65% corn. This is their standard bourbon mash bill for, um, for Old Elk. Uh, I'm sorry, 51% corn, 34% malted barley, and 15% rye. With that high of a barley bill, you would think I would be getting the chocolate notes, the, 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 uh, the nuttiness I got from the barley. I told you I tasted peanuts. Uh, you, you'd think I'd be getting those notes, but I'm getting the rye notes. 15% rye and I'm getting the rye notes. They are... No, they're using MG, MGP rye. Hmm. I was going to say they're using Canadian rye, but they're not. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, so, I, you know, it's okay. Um, it's not my favorite Old Elk offering. I have several of them. This is the second one I've tried. 
Um, I can't tell you that I'm going to come back to this and go, hmm, i got to be careful because I'll drink the whole thing all in one night. No, I won't. <laughs> um, I will come back to this when I'm in the mood for a high-proof pour. I do want to come back to it after it's set for a little while because this is the first time it's been opened and I, you know, it, it needs to needs to sit there and think about what it's done. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'll come back to it one of these times um, and uh, I'll let you know if it changed any and whatever, but um, just out of the neck, uh, I'd, I'd say that it doesn't blow me away. Um, the sherry casks, uh, I would be curious to to experience the sherry cask by itself. I would like to know what the sherry tastes like that comes out of it. I'd like to know what the Oloroso sherry is. Give that a try, maybe. Now this is going into the weeds, I get that. I would like to try that sherry. Um, I would be curious to how that taste is because what would happen if this sat in that cask for a year? Or, what would happen if it sat in that cask for only six weeks instead of six months? I'm curious about things like that. Now, they obviously are proud of it. They put it out there for me to taste and for me to talk about. And I'm doing what they, what they are hoping I will do. And uh, I don't hate it. I don't love it. Um, it just, it's got kind of a, a, you know, again, when I first tasted it, the first, the first thing that I thought of was dirt. It dried my mouth out and it tasted like dirt. And I can tell you that that flavor is a little bit overwhelming and it still hasn't necessarily gone away. I am able to pick out other notes. Um, but this is, this, is, this is one of those what am I tasting here type of tastes where you, you, you can pick out a couple things but you really can't dive into it like you can a really nice complex pour. Like the new riff a couple of weeks ago, man, that had flavor coming out of its eyeballs. It didn't even have eyeballs that had flavor coming out of its eyeballs. <laughs> Still getting some caramel, uh, cinnamon, pepper, and the rye notes. And a little bit of peanut. Yeah, so there you go. Um, I did not bring, <laughs> I was going to do this, I was going to bring one that I was going to try next week, and uh, I see one, I see one, I'll, I'll do this one, I'll do this one, let's see, is it going to be this one, no, it's going to be this one, no, this one, no, this one, no, this one, no, this one. Now, you know I don't like makers very well. But I am adventurous and I do want to try different expressions of what they have. This is a limited release. This is a limited release from this year. Stave Profile BRT-01. Uh, this is the part of the wood finishing series. Now the last one that I had was part of the, uh, whatever it's called, the special stave barrels. Uh, it's a wood finishing series, but it isn't a wood finishing series. It's called something else. And it was chocolate, or it was crumble cookie cake or something like that, or cr brownie cr cookie crumble or something. And I didn't like it. We're gonna try this one. Uh, I was talking to somebody again couple days ago and they I said what's your favorite drink and he said maker's mark like what? <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about it I gotta go eh, see I could this one I really liked on this one. this is Burbcast 131 131 so I've got to go through 130 because I, I duplicated Russell's reserve 10 year once Oops. I got to go through 130 uh, drams and decide which are my favorite well, I've got a top 15. Um, that Makers is good, I hear. I'm not a huge fan of Makers, so I haven't opened mine, but I will next week with you. Good. Good, Kevin. Thank you for that. Yeah, so this is Makers Mark Wood Finishing Series 2022 Limited Release. It's tasting notes. It says it right here on the label, so I'll just read them to you. Deep caramelized barrel notes accented with some 
toastiness and a warm finish. Okay. I like the fact that it's not named after something sweet and confectionery. That turns me off. So, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey Barrel finished with 10 virgin oak staves. So I'll have more information about this uh, next week and when we uh, crack it open and give it a try. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't. This one is another one that's 109.4 proof. It's another one that's up there. Um, so, you know, we'll give that a try next week. It was handy. <laughs> it was close, so why not? Um, as we get closer to the holidays, uh, I'm going to be deciding on what I want to do uh, for the holiday verb casts. Um, last year, I did Christmas cocktails, and I think I would like to do that again this year. Um, I like making cocktails. I need to practice making cocktails more, uh, so uh, I am okay with the regular makers, but that 46, and I, I'm with you, Paul. The Maker's 46, I really do like that one. That's probably the only one that I've ever had that I'm like, I really like this one. It's been a while since I've had it, and I do have a 46 cask strength that I need to try one of these times. So that'll come, that'll be coming up probably next year. Um, but anyhow, uh, so I'll be probably at some point doing some Christmas cocktails. Uh, and then uh, I don't think I'm going to be around for New Year's Eve. Normally I'd do a New Year's Eve burp cast, and if I do one this year, I'll be remote. Because I think I'm going to go to a party. <laughs> so... I had makers since 2014, but the barrel my name was put on when I became an ambassador just finished. Ooh. Time to make a trek. When you go, let me, let me know. I'll go with you, Dan. I would like to go down there. I've got a barrel sitting waiting, too. It's not going to be ready for a couple more years. Um, and I hope I like it. <laughs> I hope I don't hate it. <laughs> but when you go down to pick up your barrel, uh, let me know. Uh, I'd like to come along. That'd be fun. Uh, take a little road trip, do a little, little goofing off. So it'd be good. All right, guys, uh, that's it for today. Tried the old elk with the sherry cask. Uh, haven't. Oh, you haven't had Maker since 2014. I've had it since then. Um, this was okay. Uh, I like old elk stuff. This one I, I'm not in love with. It's okay. Uh, you might like it better. I might like it better when I didn't eat ribs before drinking it. Uh, so it is what it is. We will see you next week. We're going to do this one. Uh, and again, the time is 7 o'clock now. We moved it up a little bit. Um, had, to, had to move it up. Just, that's the way things work. <laughs> you got to go away by the schedule that you have. So, at least we're back on Thursdays, right, Kevin? <laughs> All right, guys. You guys, uh, thank you uh, for checking us out. Um, still trying to get Instagram going. I'm just uh, boring. Uh, still working on the blog. Uh, boring. YouTube is taking off. I'm enjoying that. I'll, I'll upload something, and man, poof, there's people watching it right away. I'm not saying there's thousands of people watching it, but there's people watching it. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. So anyway, you guys have a great uh, rest of your week and weekend. It's supposed to get really cold in Ohio over the weekend, and, and it's not going to get much better. It's going to turn into winter. When it actually becomes winter, it'll be winter. Yay. Okay, <laughs> so we will see you uh, at 7 o'clock next Thursday for this Maker's Wood Finishing Series. And again, thank you so much. I do appreciate you being here. I have so much fun doing this. I, I love it, and I love that you're here with me. It just makes it all the more fun. So take care, and we'll see you next week. Bye.